All right. Okay, okay. So, uh, welcome to episode 15 of The Photo Show. My name is Brian Matias. Had a little bit of a hiatus. So, uh, I remember the first couple of episodes I ever did uh, with this show and, you know, kind of stumbled and learned. Uh, so, let's see how many mistakes I make today. But i um, running a new version of Wirecast. I upgraded to Wirecast 7, which is broadcasting and recording. And the uh, fan in my iMac 5K is going like crazy, which is par for the course. But uh, yeah, what I'd like to do is just, uh, let's see here, I have, cool. And there's Josh, got, you know, we got the uh, comments going. And I see Dave Foster, who uh, is uh, one of the, uh, I would say one of the bigger people I know, him and Larry Petrucci uh, with live streaming. So. I see them on, so thank you for joining me. This is, like I said, this is this has been quite a uh, a long time. So just to kind of give you a little bit of backstory, uh, almost ex four months ago, four months and two days ago, I started. Uh, I took a role at Wacom Technology Corporation. They just moved their headquarters right to the Pearl District in Portland, and Wacom makes these guys. This is my Intuos Five all dusty large. Um, this sits with me in my office. And uh, I also have a small that I travel everywhere with. And here's the little uh, pen, the Wacom pen that I use. I use that on every single photo I, I've ever edited. So anyway, I was hired there to lead their social media strategy. So I've been handling social media for the global corporation. Uh, and it's taken pretty much all of my time and so when I first started, I realized that um, I wouldn't have time to do both my own uh, business uh, with Matisha Incorporated and then also do uh, you know, what the, this role demands at Wacom. So I kind of used the summer for a break, but things are starting to level out. We've had some product launches and uh, now I'm finding myself where I'm actually home for some period of time. I was in Germany for all of September a week before I left there, I was in Tokyo. Uh, I was just in New York for uh, New York City Comic Con. I was in San Diego Comic Con. I was at Photokina. So it was a very, very busy summer. Uh, but now that things are quieting down, I'm excited to come back to the photo show. The only difference is I'm not quite sure what the cadence of the show will be. You know, if it'll be uh, every other day or on the weekends, but I'll try to give as much notice as possible. Uh, you know, like I said, kind of getting back into things and uh, just wanting to see how things go. So let's start here. The first thing I'm gonna do is, uh, and so again, as a uh, one-man show, there, all right. As a one-man show, um, I have to do all this kind of like producing myself, and it's, I love it actually. At first I was, when I first started doing the show, it was kind of nerve-wracking, but um, I wanna take a look at this, uh, this Lens Baby Trio. Um, so, Lens Baby actually is a local company to Portland. They're maybe a 10 minute drive. They're a few blocks from where I used to live when I first moved to Portland. And they make these very, uh, these lenses with creative optics, creative focus optics. You've probably seen the Lens Baby Composer or the Lens Baby Composer Pro. Um, and so, a couple weeks ago, they reached out to me and they asked if I was interested in trying out this brand new lens that they were, that had just been announced called the Trio. So you can kind of see it here. It has three optics, hence the name Trio. Let's uh, let's switch over to, and you can see on the screenshot, uh, it's going to retail for two seventy nine ninety five uh, US. And uh, the thing about this lens that they told me was, this is the very first lens that they designed from scratch for mirrorless cameras. So you can see I had the drop down, and you only have three mirrorless options. You have uh, Sony, uh, Fuji, and Micro Four Thirds. So. Let's jump here really quickly. All right, so that is the, I'm trying to, there we go. Let me get some light, there. That's the trio. Uh-oh, we, we're missing focus. Anyway, and the cool thing is you can kind of switch between the three lenses. And the three lenses, there's a suite. Uh, the vint, it says vintage here, but this is a pre-production model. It's not gonna be called vintage. And then velvet. And each one of these three optics uh, changes the, the kind of creative uh, areas 
for where normally you'd have bokeh, especially on the uh, outer edges or the outer fringes. So what I found is that this lens is really, really good when you want to uh, take a photo and your subject is kind of in the center and every, you want everything around it to kind of fall out into this really interesting pattern. Let's see, what do we have? Um, oh, Nicole's texting me or she's texting other people. Anyway, so uh, this is what it is. It's a fixed here. Uh, can you see that? There, fixed 28 millimeter f 3.5. So why the lens, uh, fast aperture and, uh, or fast speed wide aperture, and it has a 46 millimeter filter thread. So if you want to put filters on, um, you can order, I think they're like 10 or $11. You can order a 46 to 77 millimeter step up ring from Amazon or B and H, both of them sell it. And then you can use any of your 77 millimeter thread, uh, filters. So I ordered one, it's on its way. I want. I figure with the polarizer, it'll probably be really cool. And even with um, some ND filters, when I'm out shooting, um, you know, waterfalls and stuff. But rather than just kind of talk about it, I'm going to show you some photos that I took. So here is a photo I took. Uh, these first four photos were taken in New York City, um, and I had had the, the lens for just a day or two. So I was just walking around and these are all edited photos. So the colors are exaggerated. They're all taken with my Sony a7R Mark II. So here's, uh, this was a complete accident. I was actually lifting the camera to take a photo and I shot the, the um, I exposed, you know, I hit the shutter button. Fortunately, focus was where I wanted it. And I actually really liked the shot. Uh, this is a uh, square crop for Instagram that I shared one of the churches uh, walking around. And again, you can see how everything in the center is in focus and then things outside of it kind of fall out. And the difference between each of the three lenses on the trio, uh, that affects the, one of them has a kind of a soft focus for the whole, the entire uh, frame. It's almost like those old, like if you put Vaseline on your lens, like that really kind of soft uh, wedding portrait focus. Um, but the other two affect the qualities of the outer bow. And so here's just, uh, you know, to illustrate uh, what that looks like. But I also did another thing. I experimented and uh, with this. So this is actually, um, I, I don't know how many of you know, but my, the original Sony a7 that I have, I never got rid of it. I rarely sell camera bodies because the, they just don't, they, they don't hold their value. And I'd rather just have the body than sell it for a huge loss. So with this original Sony a7, I had it converted to uh, infrared. And so I took these uh, a series of photos while I was walking the dogs. Um, here's one of, a, you know, the swing set. And I absolutely love what it does. You know, it's just, I think it's pretty awesome. Uh, so, so anyway, just going back here. Um, so it's... $279.95, 280 bucks. Uh, I believe that they'll start pre-ordering soon. They'll be at, uh, at Photo Plus. So if you're in New York City, I'm, this is one of the first times I'm not actually going to Photo Plus. I'm just done traveling for a little bit. I actually was supposed to be flying today to Maine to meet up with my buddy, James Brandon. He's leading a workshop in Maine, like Bar Harbor in Acadia. And I wanted to go so badly. I had my flight booked and everything, but uh, yeah, work. This coming week is a very busy week at work and I actually had to stay back. So in any event, uh, if I wasn't going to Maine, I definitely am not going to New York City. Uh, so it's a great lens. It's a lot of fun. Like I said, this is actually another kind of developer unit. The final ones will be coming out with the final naming and everything uh, soon. So if it's the reason why I'm actually bringing this lens up is because for 280 bucks, one of those questions, not questions, but the, the things I hear and even I experience all the time myself is, well, um, this is a boring place. I've shot this a thousand times, you know, anywhere around here. And when you put a lens like this on, same thing with just a lens that you haven't used in a long time. Uh, it kind of breathes new life in this scene. You're forced to look in a different way. So for 280 bucks, I think that's actually a pretty cool um, 
just quick hit fix for uh, breathing life into a new seed. All right, let's move on to the second thing. Actually, let me first see if there are comments. Uh, I don't know if this thing is updating. Oh, wait, I have to actually turn on the visibility. Okay, so it's still, let me see if it's actually, if there are comments. Okay, there are comments. Um, okay, so it's not updating. Oh, wait, now it is. Now it is. Okay, that's weird. It looks like you have to actually, I don't understand how to, how it's doing that, but it, it just updated the comments. I guess I have to actually go to the window to refresh. But uh, yeah, I have, first I have David's, uh, David's complimenting my, uh, my, Poop guy. This is my favorite emoji. Actually, no, I have kind of a new favorite emoji. And it's the one, the, it's the face that's kind of like, you know, the one that's kind of looking up uh, in confusion. That's like one of my favorites. But the poop emoji is, uh, is a classic. I have a little one. My buddy Brian Bonham got me a little one that hangs on my rearview mirror in my Jeep. And then Nicole got me this. And so I'm putting it here. Also, I have my new little kind of pop toys for uh, the Big Lebowski. So there's the dude, there's Maud, um, and then just the rest of the characters. I love the Jesus is also over there. So, and then she also, Nicole, for some reason, got me a, a Nintendo uh, tin of mints. The mints are not very good, but the controller is awesome. So just kind of sprucing up the, uh, <laughs> the uh, office area. And then uh, Tor, yeah, so Tor's asking if that's Lofoten behind me. It is. That's uh, Reyna. So I, I visited here a few times, and then that's uh, Silver Falls in, uh, in Oregon. And so two of my favorite places. I also have a, um, Panther Creek Falls hanging up over there, and I have Multnomah Falls over there off camera during uh, one of the only snowfalls that I've seen. So... I wanted to print it out and just kind of, they're on canvas, they're both canvas, everything here is canvas print with this wooden frame from Canvas Pop. Uh, not affiliated with them, don't have any codes or anything. I waited for one of their crazy sales, which they have pretty often, and I ordered my canvases. And I actually gave, uh, uh, David's got a print as well that I gave him. They, they sent me the wrong things, they sent me prints instead of canvases, and so I gave the prints out as gifts to people. Uh, let me see if, all right, more, more comments. All right, so I have to actually, it's interesting. I actually have to um, switch to the window to actually refresh so that you can see it. So Rajesh, can't see what's behind the message panel on your left. Oh, sorry. That's, that's a good point. There you go. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I forget about that. Again, and I told you at the beginning, you know, sometimes I don't know what, I have to remember the kind of proper way of doing things. But um, yeah, these are the pop toys. So I'll switch actually to the wide camera so you can see this. So there's the dude. Oh, come on, focus. There. Focus. Do it. There. That's the dude and you can kind of Oh, actually, no, I don't think... Oh, wait, no, his head doesn't really swivel. I'm scared. Um, and then here's the Jesus. So this is, like, my favorite movie of all time. And he's got his little gross little rat tail. And if you kind of could see, he has on his hand, he's got the, the like, the, uh, the glove, the bowling glove. Oh, it's so gross. The Jesus is great. And then, of course, there's Walter. Walter, who was in Vietnam, if he wants to visit. Come on. Yeah, whatever. All right. Now you see them. There you go. Uh, and then here's the little uh, poop guy that I showed off. Uh, so let me switch here. And uh, I'll bring up the comments again and just refresh them. Okay, cool. It's actually called Hanky. Who's called Hanky? The poop? I didn't know that. Is it real? I know there's uh, in South Park, Mr. Hanky, the, the Christmas poop, but I don't know about, um, hey, Kenique. Uh, I don't know that this, if it is, then I'll call him Hanky. I just call him poop emoji. Um, so next thing, unboxing. Let's do some unboxing here. So <laughs> let me bring this. Uh, here we go. All right, 
so this isn't anything, this has nothing to do with photo. And I was actually talking to Nicole this morning about it. I'm like, what should I do? Cause it's called the photo show. I was actually going to change the name of the show. Um, and she's like, well, photographers like to play video games and that's true. I like to play video games and I'm a photographer. Um, so I pre-ordered this the day it was, it went on pre-order from Best Buy, like in March. And last week I get, oh, Nicole messages me and she's like, hey, what did you order from Best Buy for $499? And I said, nothing. It's fraud. And so she marked it as fraud. And I went to Gmail and I did a search for $499. And the order confirmation from March came up from Best Buy. You would think Best Buy would email you. If you pre-ordered something months ago uh, and you automatically get a charge, you know, I didn't remember this. So, so thankfully, I was able to call the bank and they hadn't yet flagged it as, as uh, fraud but they did cancel my credit card, so I had to wait for a new credit card. Fortunately, the order still went through without any issue, and I had this delivered just, uh, let me actually get rid of the comments, just so we can see everything. Okay, so yeah, this is the PlayStation VR. Um, uh, it's for the PlayStation 4, and actually, uh, I, actually I actually got to use it, um, I don't remember, Earlier this year, uh, even before this, well, a month before this came out, I was working, Nicole and I worked in a, in a co-working space not too far from our house. Uh, this was before Wacom and everything. And uh, the guy who sat next to us was actually the, the, the owner of a video game developing sh uh, shop that was making one of the launch games called Headmasters. And so he let me, I know it looks like I'm peeing. I'm not peeing, I promise. Um, but... He let me do play the demo, like an early, early demo. That was a developer kit, um, and it was just the most fun. It was totally surreal. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so that was my first taste. When I saw it, I was like, I have to, I have to try this out. So I think a wide angle would be better here. Uh, all right. So let's open this up and see what we have inside. Because uh, so I have a PlayStation Four. Um, the original one, I'm not going to upgrade to the new 4K one because the reviews weren't very compelling. Uh, maybe if it's, if it's worth something, like if it really has a uh, higher frame rate, that'd be cool. So inside here, let's see, what do we have? Got this. Oh, to lift it out. All right. So that's the box. There's another box here. Get rid of that. And let's see what we have in here. So um, actually, while we're at it, let's see how many people have, how many of you guys, yeah, nice knife, thank you. Hey, Luria and Vicky, wow, we got all the, all the fun people here. Thanks for joining, guys. Just, uh, just to recap, we're doing kind of a unboxing of the PlayStation VR. So uh, let's see here, let me just swing back here. And, all right, so we have the PlayStation VR Worlds. Um, I don't know what this is. Oh, I guess it's kind of, yeah, it's like a demo disc. Uh, five, step into five unique worlds, whatever. And then there's the demo disc. And actually, you can see right there, if it focuses, the middle one, that's Headmasters. So that was kind of cool. Uh, then we have these like these are these remind me of those PlayStation Move I think they were called controllers Sony motion controllers so there's one here uh, looks like a weird sex toy but you know depends on where your mind goes and then oh okay so this is the this is a you see I already have a, a camera a Sony camera but I guess the bundle kit comes with one too. So now I have two cameras. All right. I wish I had actually read what this comes with. Um, and then another one of the motion controllers, I guess two hands. Honestly, I have no idea. The, the, um, the demo I did with Headmasters didn't require any controllers. You were just moving your head uh, to, to kind of hit the, to head the ball at targets. Then there's a, uh, what can I, I can only assume is, oh, this is probably the camera. Yeah, this is the camera mount. So like, you kind of 
put it in here, I assume. I don't know, but it looks like it kind of holds it. And then USB to micro USB and USB to micro USB, which I assume, I mean, not micro, sorry, mini USB. Who uses mini USB? I need to work on the stupid focus of this camera. Uh, where is it? There it is. Yeah, who uses mini USB anymore? Seriously. And uh, lens cleaning cloth and yada yada manual stuff. All right, on to the fun thing. Let's move this out of the way. Uh, all right, we have this. Slide that off. Oops. Sorry if there was any audio interference there. And how do we open the, oh, 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 wow. That's nice. See, I'm becoming more and more of a fan of industrial design like this, like good industrial design. Like, it's like, oh, it's just kind of a, a gray box. And then you're like, wait, whoa, whoa, what's this? And I like it because there's a little tether on the back. So you can't like, see, it's, it's pretty cool. I like that. Props to Sony for that. You want to experience this. You know, when you open something up, you don't want to just like, look, there it is. You want to have a little bit of an experience. So I'm actually kind of glad that I shared this with you because I didn't expect it. This is the manual. <laughs> this is a huge manual. We'll look at that later. All right, so you can see here, um, this looks like a cable. Oh yeah, this is the power AC cable. This is, okay, we're getting to the, we're getting to the helmet. Okay, so this, oh, I, you know, I heard about this. So if you have a PlayStation, you actually have to use this whole thing in addition to it. So it's like a, it's like this, it's a, this is a, a pass through. So you've got your HDMI in and out, and then you have this micro USB and a fan. So there's def the fact that there's a fan means that this is definitely, there's some sort of a processor in here. And on the front, you have some more uh, ports. So I don't know what that means. Uh, see, my entertainment center in the living room was built with a very specific kind of space requirements. I didn't really budget for another thing. So this will be interesting to see where this goes, but it's gonna have to go somewhere. Uh, HDMI cables. Uh, this is an HDMI to a proprietary cable. So I assume that's that. And then, let me see. Take this one. Okay, so here's the, here's the big boy. All right, we don't need this anymore. All right, so this is the PlayStation VR visor. And it, I don't know, has, have any of you, let me jump into the comments really quickly. Have any of you um, read the book or listened to the audio book of Ready Player One? Jump into the comments if you have, because if you haven't, I cannot recommend it enough. Uh, does it work with the old PS4? It better, Petra. <laughs> It absolutely better because I only have the old PS4. Uh, I think it does, to be honest. It would maybe actually that's why this is included is because uh, maybe the new PS4 doesn't require it. I honestly don't know, but this has some extra horsepower in it. Uh, and then let's see here. And the calls here. Uh, yeah, we don't need manuals. Uh, all right. So if you haven't read Ready Player One. Read it, read it, read it, read it. First of all, Spielberg's making the movie coming out in 2018, and uh, it's just the best book and has to do a lot with VR, so. All right, so the visor here. Let me actually go back, because I can't see. All right, that's the visor. And it, does it lift up? I, no, it doesn't, I don't think it, I'm scared to break it. Wait, let me see. All right, so, okay, so this, this, uh, this gear, you press, 
Wait, so you press, I think, and this will... Yeah, we don't need manuals. I'm not sure what it's doing. I really have no idea what it just did. Maybe it... Oh, okay, it's, it's extending this. I think. Let's see. No, that won't fit on my head. I want, I don't want to read the manual. It extends, oh wait, wait, maybe I just need to. Oh, there we go. It's kind of tight. Oh, and there's like some cardboard. Wait, what, what? oh, so there's these, you kind of see them. These are like plastic films on the eyepieces. Oh, and this is interesting. I hadn't noticed this. Like, you can kind of see, it might be hard to see, but these are the X uh, circle square triangle buttons from the controller are on here, but I don't feel any buttons. I wonder if there's pressure. Oh, may, they do kind of feel like buttons. That's weird. Um, I mean, the overall construction is really nice. It, I mean, it's a heavy plastic. And there's some nice padding over here on the back of the head and on the front. Um, there's like this weird flappy thing for where your the bridge of your nose goes. But I, I would love to figure out how to... I mean, this is a good thing if Sony's watching in terms of... I really don't like what this does. Anyway. It doesn't, I thought maybe the visor would come up, but it doesn't, like, this thing would slide up, but it doesn't. Um, so what I'm going to do when we're done with the live stream is actually hook it up. This is, these are the, um, what is it, HDMI? Yeah, HDMI and proprietary that I was telling you about earlier, so that definitely connects in. But I know, look, I know, I remember when I did the test, it fit comfortably. So I don't know what that's doing, but yeah, it's too tight for my gigantic head, even without hair. There's a, also, it looks like a speaker or a microphone right here. There's a little grill. Um, I don't know what that's for. Uh, all the lights, these will obviously light up. And uh, here's what I'm interested in. I'm going to switch back to the main camera for a second. Um, and I'm also going to turn on the comments see if there are what we have here. All right, so uh, Josh is going to dinner, cool. Um, yeah, yeah, no, Petra, the manual's not in the, in the garbage, that's for sure, but uh, I should probably read it because there, there, there looks to be some sort of a proximity sensor, which would make sense. Um, overall, look, I mean, I've, I've used several of the, you know, a bunch of other headsets from like the HTC uh, Vive or Vive, I can never pronounce it. And of course the Samsung um, headset, the, the VR, the Galaxy VR headset. But this one, I, I remember just from the demo of the Headmasters was just fantastic. The reviews for this have been really strong that I've read online so far. And there was a great article. Um, so Nicole and I, basically I, I only play the PlayStation or Xbox when Nicole's there. So every game that I buy, we go through and we look at the videos to see if um, if they're worth, if it's something that we would want to enjoy playing. Right now we're playing Mafia 3, which is fantastic. But, um, so with VR, there was an article written on, I think The Verge or Mashable, where this couple, same thing, they, they play together. Nicole's always knitting while I'm playing and she always helps me because a lot of the things I can't see because of my color blindness. So, I know that when you're playing, obviously I'll be seeing through the goggles and then what I'm seeing is going to be displayed on the TV. So Nicole will see what I see, but that dynamic is going to be pretty different. Um, so I'm, I'm very eager to get it set up and see what it's like. We'll probably try to do a live stream uh, once I start. That'll probably be from the phone, but that's that. That's that. That was so far so good. Uh, I don't want to take too much time. It's already 35 minutes, but that's the PlayStation VR. We'll see. I, I really don't know. Um, I don't think I'll return it. I'm saying that now. 
you know, is it, I don't know how many of you uh, try in if you have, if you were one of the early adopters for the very first Nintendo Wii, I was one of them, waited in line at Toys R Us. Um, where was I? I was in Syracuse, I think. I was at school. No, 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 I was in Boston. Nah, I don't even remember where I was. I think I was in Boston. I was much younger. And I was one of the first people to get one. Um, and I hated it. It sucked because the games never really, um, especially early on, never really took advantage of the technology because you have to give developers lead time to embrace the hardware, not just of the, the system itself, uh, taking advantage of the graphics power and the processing power, but also the, the new hardware. So the demo disc will be interesting. Um, I'm not really as, I'm not as excited to, everything I've done in VR so far has been passive viewing. So you put on and you just look around and whatever's happening happens. What I want is control. I want to be able to do stuff. And on the side of the box actually, this is what got me excited, is this. So where, focus there you see that thing that reminds me of the old uh nintendo wii they would make these models that you put the controller in for a gun but this excites me because you know i know that uh, resident evil is coming for virtual reality and that i can't wait for and if it uses a gun like that that would be pretty sweet gets you really immersive i know that batman the the um feedback for batman has been great but anyway that's that, I just updated the comments. Uh, why have you bought it? Play games from, oh yeah, so it's for the game. That was the show. Uh, <laughs> I was just wrapping things up and uh, for some reason the entire computer shut down uh, or the power went out. So that's never fun. But in any case, for the most part, the whole show went smoothly except for my uh, my computer showing them. I will be doing these again for sure, so just stay tuned, follow the page if, uh, if you're not already, and uh, if you're not a subscriber to my newsletter, just head over to matias.com and you'll see a sign up. I'll be sending out uh, updates on when I'll be going live. And if you have any questions or you wanna see anything, please just uh, let me know in the comments section. And for everyone who joined, I just wanna thank you so much, everyone who watches uh, in the archives, thank you so much. Uh, and yeah, I look forward to seeing you to, for episode number 16. Thanks everyone.